Welcome to a, another video in this series, The Map to Adobe Lightroom Classic. Uh, this video will cover the graduated filter, which is one of the local adjustment tools. Uh, local adjustments happen in an area you specify. They let you change color, um, exposure, uh, many of the parameters that are available to you in the basic panel plus some additional ones. So they give you lots of control of where you are, are making your adjustments inside of Lightroom. So we're going to start uh, with this photo of Ferry Boat on Puget Sound, uh, Mount Rainier in the background. As with a lot of landscape photos, the sky is too bright. Um, you can get filters for your cameras that replicate what we're going to do here in Lightroom. Uh, I, I don't have any of those. Uh, they can be expensive for one. Uh, secondly, I was on a moving ferry, so uh, it'd be hard to um, to use this very effectively with a moving uh, subject as well. So uh, I knew I could do this in Lightroom. Uh, once I got my exposure pretty close to where I wanted it, I could uh, adjust the sky later with this uh, graduated filter. So the graduated filter is in the toolbar uh, once you're in the develop module. It's right below the histogram, that's where your toolbar lives, and the graduated filter, or sometimes called grad filter, is, um, is the third tool from the right. It's uh, basically a rectangle that looks like a grid. So once you turn that on, uh, you will see the same controls we have in all the local adjustment tools. Uh, white balance, uh, tones, uh, presence, uh, this miscellaneous stuff down here, as well as color. So, uh, as is my habit, I will double click the word effect to reset all the controls from the last time I was using the tool uh, to let me be, uh, make sure I'm doing just what I want for this photo. So, for this photo, I know I'm going to darken the sky. So, I'm going to start with uh, an exposure of negative about 0.8. Uh, that's just, uh, it's kind of the range I land in when I'm not sure what I want to do. Um, so here's uh, the graduated filter. Uh, the control gives you a plus sign on your cursor. It changes to that. And the way the tool works is you start from the area you want to change, pulling into the direction of the area you want the filter to graduate, gradually fade out. So I'm going to start from the top of the photo from the sky and pull down, click hold and pull down and release before I get to the trees. So. Uh, where do I start? Uh, just start somewhere at a starting point. <laughs> uh, the more you use this tool, you'll know where you like to start. And I'm just going to click here and hold. And you'll see above the tool where the area I clicked, and now I'm uh, is 100% of the filter uh, effects. So uh, it's darker up there. As I pull down, that that area of darkness gradually fades out. And uh, there we go. Um, now I'm going to let go for just a minute so you can see what we're doing and we can talk about how the control works. If I put my cursor over it, you will see uh, the overlay, just like we get with the other uh, local adjustment tools. Um, so wherever it's pink overlaying, that's where the tool, uh, the radio, excuse me, the graduated filter is having effect. Um, so where it's the, the, the most dense pink, that is the 100% uh, of the effect. And you can see where below this middle line, uh, let me just turn the overlay on, uh, below this middle line, it's gradually fading out to zero. So in the whatever line is closest to the direction you started drawing, that's a, above that line is 100% of the effect. Uh, between the top line or the closest line to where you started and the midline fades to 50%. From the midline to the farthest line is fading from 50% to zero. It's graduating, gradually going away. If I want to change the angle of this, I click just above or below the midline uh, where I have my uh, cursor changes to the double pointed arrow, and then I can straighten or change the angle of this. I can change the distance of the graduation by clicking on the top or the bottom line, and it moves the midpoint up or down. Uh, so it changes the, the space, the distance of the graduation. So this is much smaller gradual change than this is. This is a longer gradual change. Uh, I'm going to go to something about like this. I'm going to reposition this and pull it down here. And this is something that will happen. Uh, you'll notice my trees are going to be getting a little darker that I don't want. Uh, I'll address that in a minute. 
let me turn the overlay off so we can see what we're doing. So my sky is darker as I want. I like that. Uh, it's maybe just a little too dark. I tend to do that in these videos, go a little overboard, mostly so you hopefully you can see uh, what's happening. Uh, I do want to increase contrast in that a little bit. Uh, go down to the presence uh, area. I'm going to turn up the texture just a bit, but mostly what I'm going to do is the dehaze. Uh, the dehaze is quite powerful on skies. Uh, you can get pretty quickly to crazy levels of uh, dehazing. Um, if you go, <laughs> that's that's too much. So. Uh, somewhere right around on this photo, uh, somewhere between underneath 20, somewhere between 15 and 20. I'll turn the clarity up a little bit. Uh, so this gives me a little more uh, detail, especially around Mount Rainier, a little more detail in the sky, uh, just a little more presence to it. I'm going to pull this down just a little bit more. Kind of had like this little bit of a halo you're getting around the tree, so it feels like a little bit of the mistiness uh, coming from the water. All right, so my trees here are a little too dark. Um, and that's a common thing with landscape photos. The, you're hardly ever is your horizon perfectly flat and it meets uh, exactly where you want it to. So sometimes we have to change that. Um, I'll show you uh, two ways to do it. This one, uh, on one I'm just going to show you one way on this photo. And it's at the bottom of the uh, graduated filters control panel there's uh, an option that says range mask and it's currently set to off. So if you click on that, you will see you have two ways you can mask, edit the range, and color is one, but I'm gonna choose the option luminous, which is exposure. So I wanna mask change based on exposure. Uh, on the left-hand side, it's saying um, uh, affect less of the darker tones if I pull in this way, it's going to affect less of the darker tones, which is what I want. The trees are darker than the sky, so I'm going to drag in. I'm just kind of watching, uh, and now it's not affecting these trees as much. It's still there a little bit, but it's it's not quite as obvious. If I pull from the other side, it would reduce how much of the bright uh, tones are being affected, which is, is not what I want at all for this image. So I'm going to leave the smoothness at 50 in the middle because... That's where I leave things. <laughs> so that's the graduated filter with a, a little bit of a, a luminance mask applied to affect less of these, these trees right along this midline. Let's turn it off so we can see where we started with this photo. Uh, we're just hiding the uh, graduated filter. So uh, the sky is too bright. Mount Rainier kind of disappears into a, a haze. So turn the filter on. Uh, to see what it's doing, and now we get Mount Rainier visible, a bluer sky, and a more balanced photo. So, again, you could do this, like I mentioned, on your camera with a filter. Uh, I tend to not do it uh, just because I know I can do it pretty effectively here in Lightroom. So that's uh, one use of the graduated filter, uh, and the uh, to mask it, to change the area it affects. The next photo, I'll show you another way to uh, change the area the filter affects. So I'd like to show you a, another way to use uh, uh, and change the, the mask in the uh, graduated filter using this photo, this image. So again, the sky's too bright. So graduated filter is currently active. I want to double click effect as I always do. And I'm going to again do the sky here. I'm going to darken up the sky. So how much? We'll go to about minus 0.7 here uh, just as a starting point. Click approximately in the middle of the sky. Pull down. Uh, if, you're, if your mouse is wiggly on you and you want to draw straight down, just hold down the Shift key, and that'll help you draw straight down. Um, how much of this do I want? Uh, something like that. I'm going to click Reposition, um, and there we go. So um, it's affecting a little bit of the water too much. So I'm going to decrease the amount of the graduation so it's uh, less effect. So something like that. Uh, again, uh, put your mouse over the uh, the pin, the center pin, and you'll see the, the, the overlay. And as you can see, this overlay is also affecting the telescope here, which I don't want. Uh, I don't want it any darker. I like the exposure on that, so I need to get rid of, uh, of this, which I'll show you how to do that in one moment. Uh, I want to do a little bit more tweaking up here on the change to the sky. 
want to add a little more blue to that. So I'm going to take my temperature slider a little to the left towards the blue. Uh, a little contrast add in there. Um, another thing on the sky I just about almost always do is dehaze. So turn that up just a little bit. And then I'll pop out some of the color uh, as well as increase uh, some contrast and texture in the sky. Uh, dehaze is really easy to go overboard in this guy, so use your power for good. All right, so still we've got a problem here. I'm going to show you the overlay. I'll turn that on. Uh, my my telescope is darker where I don't want it to be. So um, what I'm going to do is just like we did with the the radial filter, I can brush away where I don't want this to happen. Where I don't want the change to occur. So I'm going to turn on the brush control inside of the radio filter, uh, graduated filter, excuse me. Scroll down to the, the bottom of the panel where I have my brush controls. Uh, the A and B mode will add to the area, and the erase mode will subtract, take away from that area. Uh, so I have my brush, it has a minus sign in it, which means it's in erase mode. Uh, so I will brush where I don't want that uh, graduated filter to have any effect on my image. Um, I Generally when I'm doing stuff like this and I want to make sure I get it all, I will turn the uh, mask on so I can see what I'm doing. And then I'll go slowly around the edges. Uh, if, uh, As you can see I missed a little bit so I'm going to undo that for just a moment. There we go. And I'm going to turn the auto mask on. That'll help uh, detect the edge of what I'm doing. Um, it will slow things down. My computer's pretty slow already. Let's see if it's even going to do anything. <laughs> Is it even doing anything? Uh, it's taking a minute. I may have crashed the computer. So it worked. I'm going to turn auto mask back off. <laughs> That's just crazy slow on my co slow computer. Sorry about that. But if you need the help and you're not recording at the same time, AutoMask works really well inside of Lightroom to help uh, protect edges when you get around this nice smooth edge here. Uh, AutoMask will help you out quite a bit. So I'm going to go kind of quickly just to finish this up so you can see what happens. Uh, won't be perfect, but it will be good. Will be good. All right, so just finish up here. And that way my, uh, my telescope which is the focus of the image, will not be too dark and look smudgy and, and unattractive. So I'm going to turn the overlay off so we can just see what we've got now. And I'll take a minute on my slow computer. All right, so there the overlay went away. Uh, so we can see the effect. The sky is darker and blue. Uh, and I've erased it from the telescope. Let's turn off the graduated filter. So there it is without the filter. Uh, the sky is too bright. Uh, it lacks any detail, so turn the filter back on, and uh, there we go with uh, the graduated filter, uh, plus erasing with a brush on areas where we don't want the filter to have effect uh, for one reason or another. So another use for the graduated filter. Let's do one more where we're not drawing with the graduated filter in a straight line. All right, so the last photo I want to work on for today with the graduated filter is this photo again of Stephen and Nicole. Uh, we just did a, a radial filter to brighten them up, put a spotlight on them. Um, previously, we had uh, painted here on the grass to make it green. We did some uh, spot removal to get rid of some bits and pieces of distraction. So there's quite a bit of work done on this, this single image. And we've got a little more work to do. In the top left of the photo, uh, the trees are a little yellow and too bright, so it's pulling attention away from uh, Stephen and Nicole here. So I'm going to use the graduated filter, which is already active, to adjust that, as is my habit and custom. Anytime I go to an, I want to use the tool in a new application, I double-click the word effect to reset all my controls. So I'm going to take my exposure. I know for sure I'm going to make it darker up there. How much... We'll just start at minus 0.81 because that's where I stopped. So instead of drawing a straight line with the graduated filter, what I'm going to do is draw it at an angle. I want it to start here, fade out somewhere around here. So I'll start, click, hold, drag, adjust the angle, kind of eyeball. Um, 
I tend to not have real long graduation areas um, on my, when I use a graduated filter. So I'm going to drag it, reposition it now to a new location. And now we've got um, this darker up here, which I like quite a bit. It's still a little bit yellow up in here. Uh, so I'm going to add some uh, white balance adjustments with the temperature slider a little towards blue. That'll get rid of some of the yellow and the, the tint a little towards green, So which will obviously add green to that. So uh, really quickly, that was a quick way to just adjust this area in a seamless, uh, seamless manner. Uh, this photo had a lot of work in Lightroom. Um, <laughs> I think uh, it's got all the basic panel adjustments. It's got some split toning. It's probably got some HSL uh, plus the uh, uh, adjustment brush down here, spot removal, a radial filter here, and this one. So uh, I'm going to click on the uh, my test image for this, which is this one, and here's all the changes. So that's where this image started. Uh, spot removal, spot removal, brush down here, to change the color, uh, some spot re uh, spot removal here, the radio filter here on them, plus then the graduated filter from the corner. So lots and lots of changes, but the wonderful thing about Lightroom is uh, all these changes serve the purpose of drawing your attention more to them. They're not just effects, they are have a purpose of drawing your attention to the subject in the image, which in this case is Stephen and Nicole. Also, the other thing that's wonderful about them is they're relatively fast to work with. Uh, I probably have less than total of 10 minutes editing this photo using the tools available in Lightroom. So it's really powerful, relatively fast, and it's quick to learn. These tools are much more, I think, intuitive and easy to learn than the ones that are in Photoshop. Uh, there is more power in Photoshop, but you're, you're spending more time both learning it and using it. This completes the look at the uh, various local adjustment tools in Adobe Photoshop Lightroom Classic. We have the adjustment brush, which gives us very precise and, and specific controls of painting. The radio filter, which lets us create uh, uh, elliptical shapes that we can make changes in. And the, the graduated filter, which is good for larger rectangular shaped areas of change that are needed. Uh, use them to uh, draw attention in your photo, to complete the story of your photo. Um, not so much for effects, at least that's my advice. Have fun taking images, have fun uh, exploring Lightroom, and uh, until we meet again.